Hey guys, Liam Sheriff here again with the third in the series of these short videos and the principles of fat loss. Today is principle three and we're going to discuss hydration and how important hydration is to get guaranteed and successful fat loss results. The first thing that I would like you to remember in terms of hydration and why it's important to hydrate is the sentence here, which states, the solution to pollution is dilution. This is actually a statement that I heard recently and to me it makes more sense to dilute a toxic and harmful substance to make it less potent and damaging to the healthy cells within the body but also to the liver's detoxification ability. Now to recap from the last video we discussed the effect different toxic substances i.e. toxic food groups have on our body so surely what we want to do is dilute and effectively reduce their potentness but also how harmful they are to the body. So giving your body increased water intake is a great way of doing that. So what is it that actually dehydrates us in the first place? So what are the big sort of dehydrators, if you like, um, in terms of food? Generally, caffeine, sodas, and diuretics. Now, to explain what a diuretic is, it's just simply something that increases your urine output. And unfortunately, caffeine does that dramatically. Sodas and energy drinks generally have caffeine in there, um, which obviously acts as a diuretic, which basically means that you become more dehydrated because you want to go to the toilet more often. So avoid all of these where you possibly can. Choosing fluids as water is one of the biggest problems that I see with clients on a day-to-day -day basis. When I ask them to submit food diaries to check over, to check how well their nutrition has been in the week, they often confuse fluid intake with water intake. Now, as just discussed in caffeine, it's very important to separate the two. Because even if you've got quite a large mug of coffee, which obviously has sort of three or four hundred milliliters of water in there, the caffeine itself will actually counteract the intake of water because it'll be increasing and encouraging your body to actually get rid of that water. Okay, so it's important to distinguish fluids and separate it from your water intake over the course of the day and make sure that if you are calculating how much water you're actually drinking um, you don't include any fluids any fruit juices or any such sodas of any kind alcohol again as we know is a massive problem with for dehydration severely dehydrates our body and generally leads to the hangover headache if you like in the morning which is just a sign of dehydration Drinking alcohol also acts as a diuretic, so again, more urine output, and alcohol is very toxic and very chemical. Okay, so as we said in the last slide, what we want to do is actually dilute and reduce the harmful effect of these toxin, some toxic substances. Rather, so drinking a lot of water if you are going to have any alcohol is very essential. Simply not drinking enough now. Again, this may seem obvious to most people, but one of the biggest problems that we have and why we become dehydrated is that we just simply don't drink enough. Yeah, we It's generally due to lack of preparation or lack of access to water machines or, or, or bottled water when we're out and about. And um, generally, as, as a nation, if you like, or as a, a population, we just simply don't drink as much water as we should. So, them are the kind of four biggest things that cause us severe dehydration and four things that we need to obviously get right. So what are the problems of dehydration then? What sort of problems can it have? Well, the first one is water retention, which usually incurs uh, added weight on the scales. The reason your body would re retain water sometimes when dehydrated is because we have what's known as a water regulatory system. Rather like a dam, each organ and each area of your body has a certain level of water that it needs to maintain to perform its function. If your water regulatory system senses any decrease in the water levels in any particular vital organ or any particular metabolic system, then you, your body will naturally want to retain water so that it doesn't go into sort of stressful survival mode when it starts panicking about how much water is in your body. So sometimes not drinking enough water can actually make you your weight, your physical skill weight, increase because your body's trying to retain what you already have inside. More toxic environment within your body equals a poorer detoxification ability. So as we discussed before, if we're not diluting the toxins enough, then it's going to be more toxic, more harmful environment, 
and the detoxification process of your liver removing the toxins from your fat cells and basically flushing them out isn't going to happen. Increased cortisol levels, as we discussed in the last video, cortisol is our primary stress hormone and the higher cortisol goes, the more fat you're likely to store. So again, when your body's dehydrated, this is actually seen as a form of stress uh, to your body, which will incur increased cortisol levels and mean that your fat loss is hindered and put you at risk of storing more fat. Again, one of the biggest problems with dehydration is the confusion of hunger for thirst. They claim that 9 out of 10 times we are hungry, we're actually hungry for water or we're hungry for rehydration. So if you are hungry, try having maybe a glass of water first and see whether that hunger will disappear. And you usually find that a lot of the, the hunger pain, if you like, that you get it is psychological. Increased risk of overall illness. Now, anything from headaches to angina, cardiac pain, hypertension, um, back pain, there's so many different ailments and illnesses that are a direct result of dehydration that it's really important to keep the body dehydrated so that from a health aspect it functions optimally. So now you probably want to know how much is actually enough. So how much is enough for your body to be correctly hydrated? Approximately 1 litre per 50 pounds of body weight should be enough for you. It's essential though not to just start hammering the water from day one. Okay. If you do, then your body may either retain it and retain too much, so your, your fat loss or your weight loss may seem hindered at the, at the start, or you may sort of, as diuretics would, your body would increase the output because you've got too much in there and it's trying to regulate it at a, a level that it wants it to be at. So the best way to do it is basically increase the, um, the amount of water intake over the course of a week or two. So if you were only running on about one litre per day, then add in maybe half a litre for a three days and then open it again by another half a litre the next three days and so on and so on until you, you reach your optimum levels for your body weight. It's probably the best way to go about it. If you're still finding that although you, you're drinking the right amount for your body weight and you're still passing too much so you still go in the toilet far too often and you've removed all the diuretics, the caffeines, the sodas etc then try adding a small pinch of sea salt um, if, if you are urinating too often. Okay? And th that'll help obviously retain a little bit of the water. When we say a small, small amount, um, basically I do mean that, and if you can taste the salt in the water then you've added too much. Never leave the house without a bottle is probably the easiest way to get enough water. Okay, I never ever leave my house without a bottle in hand or in the car so that wherever I am I can just simply go and fill it up. So what about the quality of water then? Well, we would discuss that in the last video that UK tap water currently has estimated 350 plus chemicals. Okay, so the quality of tap water unfortunately is what it used to be. Aim for bottled water where you possibly can, which is what we would like to call clean water. And in terms of the, the type of bottle, if you can get glass, that would be preferred. Okay, I mean, depending how sort of um, conscious you are of the environment and, and certainly I am in terms of pollution and sort of plastics giving off gases and things like that I try to go for bottled water where possible but if you only have um, sorry glass bottles of water <laughs> where possible but if you only have access to, to plastic then then obviously that's all you can do so um, aim for glass preferably but um, bottled plastic is better than drinking tap water you can finally get something called a reverse osmosis filter which is basically something that they can fit to your tap in your house and it'll pretty much remove all of the chemicals from the water so you can turn your tap water into clean drinking water and then you can obviously just fill up your bottles and take them out with you and that's pretty much it for hydration so again stuff that we probably already know yeah stuff that we know we should be doing that we don't do but admittedly the most neglected principle of fat loss so get hydrated and get fat loss.